Oh boy. <laughs> what? Here we are. Yeah. What, 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 what can you even say? <laughs> evil, evil clergyman. Jackie kept calling it evil clergyman, but it's the evil oh, clergyman. Oh, what's the difference? Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. It's the same. It's the same thing. I kind of thought that there, I think I kept thinking evil clergymen and that there were going to be a bunch of them. <laughs> That's what I yeah. was thinking too. Yeah. It is just, it's, yeah, singular man. I like the idea of just millions of evil clergymen, just like a gremlins just kind of running, <laughs> over overrunning a town. And so. I wrote down what Tubi's description of it is. Tubi. And the, the, they had the description, a sacrilegious priest with a sadistic streak may be deceased, but his evil deeds continue to haunt an ancient castle and those doomed to live there. Strange. But that's not what we watched. <laughs> it's like the people who wrote the synopsis don't even know what they watched. <laughs> They're just like, yeah. uh, <laughs> he may be dead. Maybe he's not dead. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> he may be deceased. Yeah. No, where nobody's really clear. So this was originally part of a three-part horror anthology. Oh, right. From the 80s that didn't get released until 2012. Yeah. yeah. Called The Pulse Pounders. I guess 1988 was the when it was going to come out, I guess. And I, apparently Evil Clergyman would have been the first episode of this anthology. Okay. And then they just kind of... I don't know when they re-released it. Do you know when they re-released I, it? I don't know. Um, maybe 2012? I don't know, but now we're able to watch it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Not, the not all of them. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the only one available is The Evil Clergyman. <laughs> and yeah. rightfully so, because it stars Jeffrey Combs and Barbara Crampton. What's not to love? I didn't know they did so much H.P. Lovecraft stuff. I actually did not know this was also H.P. Lovecraft. So it's it's like a Charles Band, H.P. Lovecraft, Crampton, and Combs. It's are just like a happy little family. Yeah, yeah. like the yeah. power team. Yeah, I kind of want to read the original Lovecraft writing of this because, man, there's a lot that is unspoken here or is just alluded to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we watched this after Castle Freak, and it's actually vaguely Castle Freakish because there's a castle. There's a castle. <laughs> Which very- is definitely a real castle and not at all made out of building blocks or styrofoam. <laughs> it's a, it's such a fake castle. It's so uh, fake. It really it's is. It's funny, too, because it's the whole movie is it has this... VHS look and it's blurry but like you can still see that the bricks are so fake (laughs) and I think that was part of them re-releasing it is that they had lost like the 35 millimeter and found a copy on VHS and that's what you're watching is the master of that VHS that's awesome like it really comes through (laughs) it is pitch black in parts I love uh, like what sequence of events has to happen to make it so that like the only surviving copy of your film is like a VHS (laughs) like that's it somehow (laughs) Yeah, what happened, Full Moon? Come on, know. guys. Yeah, nothing good. It seems like. But... <laughs> yeah. Well, the the, the time stuff is funny because it was filmed in 1988, never released. So the movie is a really cheap VHS aesthetic. But then the opening credits have this really cheap mid 2000s CGI aesthetic. Photos of Jeffrey Combs with like the stock. There's a Photoshop filter that's like a a paint daubs. I, I think it's called paint daubs. It makes it look like it's yeah. painted. Yeah, or some mosaic. They just kind of like uh, cycle through ten photographs with the paint daubs filter as. MIDI music plays and stock footage of smoke plays. And then it, and it cuts from that just to like noisy VHS with scan line noise. And it's, it's such a jarring cut. Yeah. I mean, who doesn't love that sort of VHS aesthetic? It's, I mean, it's got its charm. Yeah. It really does. Yeah. yeah. I feel and like it, I use the it, word, I feel like I use the word charm a lot. Charm. <laughs> charm in terms. It's like a nice word for <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But I feel like it, and this movie maybe is like kind of aided by some of the darker parts. Like while you can't always see what's going on, it does maybe like smooth out some of the, some of the rough edges, but there were still like, I think Jackie, you pointed out like the, um, the levitation scene mm. and then with the, the face make like makeup, there were some great special effects kind of worked in, but also like the shadows then around the edges kind of, you don't see the scenes as much. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man! So how long is it? It's half an hour. Yeah, it's exactly half an I hour. I think it's twenty eight minutes or twenty nine yeah, minutes. Yeah. Twenty eight minutes without the commercials. Yeah, it's funny because I feel like in the first fifteen minutes, like pretty much nothing happens. Like yeah, 
Okay, I guess we'll do the. Let's the, go through it. <laughs> let's do the plot. <laughs> I guess we'll do the the painful shot by shot <laughs> plot breakdown. Well, I mean, it's it's a short one this time. Scene one: Barbara Crampton arrives at Castle. You. What do you want? Is greeted by mysterious old lady. I don't know who she is. I don't think they explain her whatsoever. She seems like some caretaker of the castle. Yeah, she, she is owns, not kind to Barbara Crampton's character. Owns yeah. the castle. She says weird stuff though about like comparing her be- her beauty when she was younger to Barbara Crampton's. I didn't know if they were related or if it was just it, it was very unclear. No, you are not as beautiful as I was. I had better bones and eyes. She instantly just tears into Barbara Crampton, and it's kind of strange too because for the first ten minutes, I feel like Barbara Crampton says almost nothing. She just kind of yeah. stands there. She's like, "I want to go upstairs," and while this old lady just harangues her about, uh, I guess Barbara Crampton came and you know had sex with someone upstairs. The old lady's like, "Oh, I I heard the noises you made behind the door." There are a few things I don't understand, like those strange noises that came out of that room when you two were upstairs. You listened at the door. I didn't have to. I did. But I didn't have to. Yeah, she's like ranting about the rats she keeps hearing. Mm. And then supposedly there's some chair that gets moved across the room at night that she hears. Well, I think the chair that we find out Combs killed himself on moves every night. But that mm. it, it well, and she she did have a line that I really liked where she said it kind of out of nowhere, like Barbara Crampton's like, I want to go up to the room and without you at that time, we don't understand what's happening. But she said, the old lady says to her, you certainly have an unhealthy obsession with sex and death. Yeah. And she kind of pauses and is like, well, who doesn't these days? It's- I mean, it's true. You certainly have an unhealthy obsession with sex and death. Oh, well, who doesn't these days? I feel like that's like a script note that accidentally made it into the script. <laughs> yeah. you know, it's like Barbara Crampton arrived. She is an unhealthy relationship with sex and death. Yeah. And then the actor reading just, the yeah. screenplay is like, the author seems to have an unhealthy relationship. And you're like, that's a good line. I'm going to put that in the yeah. movie. It's like, also, the landlady says something like. Landlady? <laughs> like, no, I think she's. Well, <laughs> IMD, IMDb lady. calls her the landlady. Well, it's funny to just think of a landlord for like just an old castle with just a Jeffrey Combs <laughs> ghost and nothing else. Hey, man, landlords are, have yeah. everything. Landlords are a running theme through all of our all of the movies we watch, too. <laughs> yeah, sure. yeah. Um, but, but she like insults. Uh, Barbara Crampton's like looks. She says yeah. something like, "My bones were better." She like grips her face. <laughs> yeah, there's no way. <laughs> My bones. Are Barbara better. Crampton. You're looking at young Barbara Crampton. I mean, oh, like current Barbara Crampton is gorgeous. It's don't even. She's just rude and Sacrilege. wrong. Yeah. That's her. That's the landlady's main characteristic. <laughs> I love that um, specific dig. It's like, my bones are better than your bones. <laughs> as if, <laughs> as yeah, if that's like, as if Barbara's like, oh, how dare you? <laughs> no, my bones. I guess yeah. it's like the one thing you really can't control. Yeah. Your bones. <laughs> True. Yeah. yeah. So again, I feel like 15 minutes is just her ripping into Barbara Crampton. Barbara Crampton Ooh. goes up to this room and opens it up. Then all of a sudden, so much happens. <laughs> like, yeah, she like she like stares out the window for a little bit. Yeah. Although I do love that Barbara Crampton at some point is just like, will you leave me alone, please? I'd like to be alone now, please. Like you've just been yeah. insulting me in a steady stream. Kicks her out. Yeah. yeah. And then there's a, like, it feels like a music video set up. Yeah, she's crying out the window and it kind of seemed like she's going to break into song, but she doesn't, thank God. Although it might be interesting if this was a musical. <laughs> I think I said this before, but this feels like a stage play because I think 99% of the rest of this takes place in this one room. There's a series of strange events in this one room and then she leaves and that's the end of it. Look, and, man, they, yeah. they didn't have that much styrofoam to make another room. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's nicer. It's like a classic kind of one night lock in. Yeah. The thing of like, you have to spend one night in this something room. Right. Yeah. right. <laughs> she cries at the window a little bit. Jeffrey Combs appears. Jonathan, is it you? Where are you? I'm here. I guess he's supposed to be a ghost, but it's not very clear. He doesn't, he doesn't look like a ghost. He just looks like Jeffrey Combs. Yeah, because they alluded to the fact that he killed himself. Like yeah. The landlady says something about that he, he died. 
Um, but there he is. He's just popped into like the corner and Barbara Crampton's like, I thought you were dead. Yeah. He, he asks, why did you come here? And she says, to make peace with your memory. Why have you come here? T- to make peace with your memory. Which is, and then, makes you and think. then he just gropes her. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And then he ghost gropes her for a little while. Yeah, it's creepy because it's just his hands, but you can't see the rest of his <laughs> body, but he's behind her. So it's like where his head should be is just gone. It kind of looked like that thing where you pretend to hug yourself and you put your <laughs> arms behind your back and you're like, oh. I really did. <laughs> In fact, I couldn't tell if that was supposed to be like a funny special effects shot or if he was literally yeah. just behind her groping her. Because as you said, the way they film it, like you only see his arms. And I actually thought it was supposed to be like ghostly disembodied arms. But I think it's also possible that he was just behind her. And also, he's a clergyman. So he, but. He's an evil clergyman. He's an evil clergyman. Are clergymen, I should have done some very basic. (laughs) Are they allowed to have relationships? No. No, I don't think so. He seemed like a Catholic priest. Yeah, he had like a little priest collar on. Oh, but he's an evil clergyman, though. <laughs> evil priest. Evil priest can have as many relationships as he wants. And I would say that is one weakness of the motion picture. Is <laughs> it's not a motion picture. Well, it's the one, though, the only one. The the clergy thing doesn't matter at all. He, he yeah. It, it never comes up even remotely. He could have just been any guy. He could have yeah, been. Yeah, it's true. He could have been just like a. There's yeah. no reason for him to be a clergyman. But it's the name of the movie, though, so he needs to have his little costume. Which I wonder how much this diverges from like the Lovecraft story, which may have actually featured actual clergy people doing clergy type things, and they're like, you know, well, let's take that title. It's Lovecraft, yeah. and we'll put Barbara Cramp to getting groped in some scene, and we're golden. Well, there. Yeah. So there's a whole backstory though that's not clear. Like, did she meet him when he was? a clergyman and they had an inappropriate like inappropriate love relationship she he was she seduced him or he seduced her it's it's unclear like how long they've even known each other before he killed himself Mm -hmm. so many questions it's left very open there's a great line i think matt you noticed this uh I missed this actually because the audio is bad too because it's VHS. Unless yeah. you unless you crank up the volume, it's really easy to miss lines. But uh, actually, what's the what is Jeffrey Combs' character name? Does he have a name? Jonathan. 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 That's I it. Think that's Jonathan. it. I, IMDb only has him as Jonathan, Jonathan the clergyman. <laughs> <laughs> that's so it's just one name, the clergyman. It's such a vanilla name for like an evil clergyman. Uh, yeah. Who is later described as like a black sorcerer or something? But but he says, "Your body is my religion." Your body is my religion. Have we seen Jeffrey Combs in a love scene? Yeah. Uh, not counting Castle Free. Castle Free does not seen him in a love scene like that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and they just, he immediately is just like shirt off. Like, let's go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Priest collar off. It's, it's time to get romantic. <laughs> the camera panned down. We saw one frame of what we thought was a cat under the bed. And then all of a sudden we got a, we were watching on Tubi. And then all of a sudden, Tubi injected like a like three minutes of ads. And it's like the worst time for you to get ads. Worst time, because as soon as it comes back, we find out that it's not a cat under the bed. It's some horrible rat monster with a human face. Um, <laughs> so bad. I, I just kept thinking about um, what we do in the shadows, hmm. but it was way, way more horrifying. Like the dimensions yeah. and the way it moved and the sounds it makes, every part of it. <laughs> was the scariest part of this movie. Yeah. And I would say this is about the 15 minute mark approximately. Probably. And then because I feel like the beginning took a while. And then from this point to the end, it's just nonstop insanity. And yeah. it's, just, it's a total roller coaster. Well, the way that scene is shot too, it's like, I don't know if they did it on purpose or it's just a beautiful accident, but you really do. It's like, oh, it's a kitty. And then it kind of crawls <laughs> out of the shadows and it's like, what the fuck is that? It's so. Well, and then there's, there's some disconnect when you realize that it's David Gale playing mm-hmm. this rat creature oh. and you're like, oh, I have so much respect for him for the amount of prosthetics and special effects makeup he's put on himself throughout his career. Yeah. R.I.P. <laughs> Yeah. I Googled it afterwards and I didn't, like his face looked familiar. And then, yeah, I remembered, oh, it's a guy from Reanimator. So it's, again, like the Everyone's same. back. Yeah. The same yeah. old cast. A little, yeah. little reunion. But this time we got uh, David Warner, too, who I think at this point he shows up like while Barbara mm-hmm. Crampton is sleeping or dreaming. She wakes it's up. kind of unclear. She wakes up and Jeffrey Combs is gone. And then she talks to David Warner, who is another ghost, it seems. Yeah. Yeah. What are you going to say? Um, well, David Warner... I don't think he was in Reanimator at all. I would have caught on to that, but he 
I'm a huge Star Trek fan. He's in Star Trek Six, Chancellor Gorkon. And I was like, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's Gorkhan's Gorkhan. Um Well, he definitely is one of those faces where when you see the yeah. actor, it's like, oh, I've seen this guy in a hundred movies, yeah. but I yeah. can't yeah. remember what they are. Yeah. Um, and he's listed on IMDb as evil clergyman too, which is strange. So were they both oh. evil clergymen or is IMDb just... There's more than one evil clergyman. Yeah. Okay, so there are, there are clergymen, but it does see... So from what I got... And from what he tells Barbara Crampton is that it's almost like Jonathan's plot is to get people to kill themselves so that he can take their souls. He won't let you leave. He needs your soul. He's hungry for it. So I guess that this guy's soul might be taken and he's now kind of, but yeah, he seems to be both warning her and then also kind of working with Combs. It was it was confusing. I didn't. I didn't understand his motivations. <laughs> yeah. 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 He could have been a little more clear. One of the notes I wrote down was he says, uh, "I am one of your lover's many victims." Oh. He says, like, oh. <laughs> "Who are you?" One of your lover's many victims. Oh. <laughs> but it uh, makes you wonder if actually Combs seduced him as well, and if yeah. he if he plays both both teams, you know. Truth is, he never loved you. He seduced you. There seems to be kind of an understanding of like, this is how Combs does it. Mm-hmm. He he loves you and then he leaves you. Because he also gives a backstory that that was just confusing about what Combs' human life was that has come to an end. That he like, had, he got, he was kind of kicked out. I'm a bishop from Canterbury. Sent to expel your lover from our church. Why? Because he could feel love for someone. Oh, you fool. He disappeared from his last congregation, leaving a woman he had an affair with in a mental hospital. That's not true. And another in a bathtub full of her own blood. (laughs) To the ghost clergyman, he is like, he bashed my head in? When I confronted your lover with his sins, he laughed. Then he beats me to death with a holy chalice. Yeah. It was a pretty cool little prosthetic on his face. You could see like some white bone sticking out. So did he murder him? Yes. That's what I picked up. Oh, and he also reveals that the the rat creature is Jeffrey Combs' familiar. What was that thing? The beast with a human face. The loathsome monstrosity much like ourselves. It's your lover's familiar. His attendant demon. Yeah. Yeah. He, he calls him the beast or the human face, I think. Or well, something that, like that. And kind that. of demonic. So he's like a demonic beast with a human face familiar. Like so I, it makes it feel like he is like a sorcerer or something. Yeah, yeah I just see it familiars with like witchcraft, right? And I think actually... The ghost says uh, he's a sorcerer. He's a black magician. He's a sorcerer. He's a black magician. Okay. Mm. Which again, it makes you wonder why the clergy thing is in the film, but that's fine. That's okay. It yeah. all happens so fast. It's just yeah. this dump of information that's so and, I, and you're still recovering from seeing the demon familiar, and you're just, <laughs> just a lot to dig in. Yeah, and I feel like immediately after that, like snap, Jeffrey Combs is back in the bed because he disappeared after the sex scene. He's back yeah, in the yeah. bed and he says, like, that was our best yet. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's all, like, spread out yeah. on the bed. His yeah. arms are up. He's, like, just relaxing. But, like, fully clothed with his priest like, where was collar he? back on. Under the bed, maybe? No, that's where, <laughs> Under the, the, that's where the beast is. is. <laughs> Combs is just out for a second. I like he's that like, he's just... You've done the business. I gotta go. I'll be back. Yeah. Talk to this ghost. No, I like Kat's theory that he just climbed under the bed while the other ghost was talking to Barbara Crampton. <laughs> you know, like when you're a kid and you like to go under furniture just because if you could fit, it's fun to be under furniture. It yeah. feels cozy. You yeah. pretend you're somewhere else and then you're exactly. like, surprise. <laughs> it does seem like he has some sort of power to like pop in and out of different spaces. Well, though. he's dead, right? Jeffrey Combs is dead. He's yeah, a ghost. Yeah. Too, yeah. And I think even at this point, he re- reveals like, oh, I did kill myself. It did happen. I killed myself on this like noose right in this room with this chair yes. right in this room killed myself that i committed suicide yes it's true 
I did. He points to a noose in the ceiling. And then yeah. he like tries, He is this the point where he tries to kill himself again? He does. He kills himself like again on the same noose, like yeah. immediately. Yeah. Which is Does weird. he ever explain why he it's killed rough. himself? Like what he what he got out of that, or? Well, it looks really cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, it leads to a great little scene. I mean, yeah. I guess you could imagine that maybe that gave him some sort of power, but I don't yeah. understand why he did it again. Just for fun, well, I guess. He's maybe trying to convince her to do it, so he's pushing her towards it. But I don't know if that's the way to convince someone to commit suicide is to do it yourself first. That's not what I would do. Right. <laughs> the the ghost drops some line that the that the rat man monster like wants to make you hurt yourself. <laughs> Didn't they say that? Yes. Oh okay. yeah. yeah no, he, oh, because he's like the rat wants your soul. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. At some point, it feels like the rat is actually controlling stuff too, which is weird. Yeah, it's I think the weird. rat's the boss. Okay. <laughs> or I mean, I think they're in cahoots. Yeah. So it could be called the evil clergyman. And yeah. the rat creature, and then give the rat creature a name. <laughs> yeah, it definitely seems at least like they're equals or something. Yeah. Um, yeah. I remember looking at the poster for this, and, you know, it's got Combs and Cramden on it. Their big old faces are right there. But then it's got that little rat creature in the corner. <laughs> Well, I'm surprised. I remember, like, I, I didn't know I anything that. about I this. <laughs> I didn't know anything about this except that little <laughs> bit on the poster of like this rat thing. Well, I'm surprised this has a poster because it's not even like a real thing. Is it yeah. like a is it like a fake poster? Or is it just like a JPEG they threw together for I, the maybe, release? Maybe I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just kind of curious. I want to look at it. You guys can Google the poster as we as we do in real time. <laughs> yeah. Now this is podcasting. <laughs> <laughs> we're all just independently googling oh yeah we're if looking at the driving poster driving right now do not google the poster <laughs> we should put it on our instagram we'll put it on our instagram yeah perfect. yeah <laughs> yeah there's a rat on there huh the poster reminds me of the opening credits where the um the text the evil clergyman is in this hilarious like cg 3d typeface that's just yeah. wildly inappropriate for this movie actually like it just doesn't fit at all it looks like a marvel yeah. or a marvel thing yeah i mean you know it's a uh... At least it has some sort of style to it. It feels like an Art deco style, which doesn't really <laughs> pertain to the movie at all. Yeah. No. I feel like the rat on this poster is a lot more hairless than the actual rat. <laughs> yeah. The yeah. actual rat, fuzzy. It's like, like, it a, looks cat. like a cat. <laughs> well, I want a whole movie about that creature. Like, yeah. just tell me what it is, where it came from, what it does. Uh, yeah, it was making the most crazy noises. Fucking bitch! I think we well we were talking about just gross noises in uh, Castle Freak, but this one was making yeah. more like it was gross but funny. A different kind of yeah. gross noise. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And and just cussing like you you pointed yeah. out just, just every every line is just full of he's got a potty mouth. Yeah. If you went to like a, a writer's room and just gave them the prompt Castle Freak. Like half of the writers might have come up with the movie Castle Freak and half the writers might have come up with this <laughs> script because they're kind of related. Yeah, it's really true. Yeah. I mean, he's a he has a better freak, the like familiar, the rat man familiar yeah. than poor Giorgio, who was just a five year old boy. Yeah. He wasn't really a freak at all. Yeah. That's Maybe true. the rat has an equally tragic backstory. <laughs> Let's hope so. Okay, now I want a buddy comedy that's just Giorgio and the rat <laughs> just living in a castle <laughs> causing <laughs> hygiene. Castle freaks. Castle freaks. <laughs> well, that's definitely one through line with all the Combs films we watch. Is every time we watch a Combs film, we say, I want a buddy comedy of something. <laughs> I think with Dr. Mordred, we said, like, we want a buddy comedy with, like, him and the cop character. Yeah. With, yeah. with Frighteners, we definitely wanted a buddy comedy where it's him with the police force just like helping solve crimes and stuff yeah. yeah with yeah with castle freak i think we mentioned wanting a buddy comedy where it's just giorgio and <laughs> and john just out in the town in italy oh, yeah. just yeah, like a bosom yeah. Buddy. just bonding perfect strangers yeah. they were so close to the end of the storyline already because yeah. combs hangs himself again he says but he's still alive he says kiss me like you used to kiss me like you used to Kiss 
The landlady will come for me. Kiss me. Like you used to. There's a scene that I think she's supposed to be giving him a blowjob as he's hanging from the noose. But did oh, you get, did I didn't you get pick that? up on that. No, it's too dark. <laughs> well, well they, it doesn't show it at all. It doesn't show anything. I think that's just, it's just implied. But yeah, it's very strange. I think that's what's happening because he's hanging from the ceiling. And then you see Barbara approach him and you see him kind of look down a little bit. And you see the rat kind of look. And the rat's like, oh, oh. Yeah, the rat is watching. <laughs> but it's, oh my God, I missed that. Well, it's, and then the other yeah. ghost clergyman shows up and 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 is kind of i think he says blasphemer which doesn't really make sense in the context of like but yeah she's he says i'll let you out if you do this yeah if you kiss me like you used to Mm -hmm. like wink and and then when the clergyman she's so mad where she's like he he was gonna let me out if i did this and it's like oh sweetie no (laughs) you ruined everything Oh. Well, yeah, yeah. The the evil, so the ghost says blasphemer, and the rat responds, "Fuck you, dickhead." <laughs> Did you catch that? Blasphemer. Fuck you, dickhead. <laughs> it's so fast, and again, it's so hard to hear some of the dialogues. It's, I wrote that. I down. love that all of his lines are d- like really aggressive and gross. Yeah. 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 That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Barbara attacks the ghost. She, it seems like she kills him, but he's already a ghost. So that's another frighteners tie in, like how you can kill a ghost with, <laughs> by hitting it. Yeah. She that. like punches that ghost in the head multiple times, like bloodies up her hand. Yeah. And no, then she it's has gone. Blood on her hand. And then he's gone and the blood's gone. So it was his ghost blood that disappeared when he disappeared. Yeah. Then she hangs Makes herself. Yeah. Then she immediately. Yeah, what hangs would herself. you do after that? I was Hang just- yourself. Please be real. Just hang yourself. <laughs> so this could have been a, a full length movie where you really saw her broken down. She gets broken down pretty quickly. Yeah. But right before she hangs herself, she says something of like, I hope you are telling the truth or I hope you didn't lie. Almost like she thinks doing this is going to get her out or she'll be able to be reunited with him. Yeah. Which it, I, I guess in a way she is. Yeah. Yeah. In a way. And I think when she hangs herself, the rat says, I love you. Which. What? Yeah. Which made me like realize that I need to watch this again and like really <laughs> analyze what the rat represents because I don't understand. Yeah, <laughs> something is going way over my head here. Yeah, yeah, it made me wonder if he was like almost controlling Combs in some part of it. Maybe they're all the rat now. Oh. It's just rat all the way down. We I should mean- we should do a series where we just watch this. Like once a month, and every time we just come up with new. <laughs> That's a great idea. <laughs> yeah. Just every month we're like, I still don't understand it. <laughs> I learned nothing. Yeah. We just come up with more and more like theories about yeah. different characters. <laughs> or we could just read the book. It, yeah. <laughs> the book I, actually... <laughs> That's fine. I do feel like that fits in more with like the Lovecraftian thing. If like the rat is this kind of, you know, Svengali like can take over these souls and bodies and stuff and inhabits them. Mm, yeah. I don't know. But so, and then this <laughs> is the part where Combs asked the rat for permission to keep Barbara Campton's body. Yeah. Cause he says he loves her body specifically just the body. I love this one's body. So power. Begging to be exploited. And then, like, the weird, I think, I mean, of all of the weirdest part, I think the weirdest part is the when the rat says, kiss, like, okay, for a kiss. Yeah. And, and like, puckers <laughs> up. Yeah. And Jeffrey Combs, like, leans in, and the, and it's kind of like this chaste little kiss. And then Jeffrey Combs, like, pulls, like, rat hair out it's of weird, his mouth. Because, like, Combs' like, lips are, like, a little bit wet in that scene, too, like, as he goes in for this kiss and then pulls this little rat hair. And it's, like, a tender little kiss. Yeah, it's yeah, the way you'd kiss yeah, a cat yeah. in real life. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> On the lips. Just <laughs> and, and I swear the rat monster says, like, kissy kiss. It's where he yeah. says, like, give me a kissy kiss. And then he does it. So it's very pet like. It's so weird. And it's like, it's almost comedic, but it's, I don't know. Well, I, they might have been going for something there where, like, it's it's like a, a pet owner relationship, but actually the rat acts like the owner and Jeffrey acts like the pet. 
I don't yeah. know. Yeah. I called him Jeffrey. Mr. Combs acts like the pet. <laughs> Mr. Combs. Sir Combs. I don't know. Yeah. So the, the rat says, yeah. So Jeffrey says, I want the body. And then the rat says, yes, if I get the soul. Can I have it? Her body. You can have her soul. Just let me have her body. Which is weird, too, because then uh, the very last scene is Barbara Crampton kind of waking up and leaving. Well, no, no, you missed. Oh, I missed something. Because uh, Jeffrey Combs goes to Barbara Crampton's body and then the rat. It is like watching and he's like, ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's like, oh man, he really is, is he so weird. It's creepy. They really allude to like some weird, like necrophilia type stuff. And that's not what actually happens. Thankfully. No, no. it's it, much worse. Yeah. But what confused me is that the final shot is Barbara leaving the room and talking to the old lady again that she saw at the beginning. And it seems like Jeffrey Combs is uh, like possessed her body, but yeah. But I thought the rat got her soul. So unless... Well, the rat got her soul out of her body, and then Uh, Jeffrey Combs possessed her body. I got it. Yeah. Yeah. Which is what I kind of took out from that. Yeah, but I think that's. What I think Barbara is gone in all senses. I think Jeffrey's walking around in a Barbara meat sack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's evident from Barbara Crampton doing one of the best Jeffrey Combs impersonations you're gonna see. It is good. It is good. I, love that, yeah. I have to go now. I won't be coming back. You look different. I feel different, like a new woman. I love it because she, she, yeah, she does a great job. Uh, Jeffrey always does this weird thing. Well, not weird. Mr. Combs. Mr. Combs does this thing (laughs) with his mouth where he, he usually shows his bottom teeth a lot and I can't even really do it myself, but I always, I, once you notice it, you can't unnotice it. And she does it. (laughs) She does it. And I was like, oh, (laughs) Combs has definitely possessed her. I bet Jeffrey Combs is like right off camera like laughing at barbara's jeffrey combs impersonation i mean it seems like they're friends <laughs> i'm sure yeah. they had a great kick out of that yeah i feel like there was probably some discussion of how i'm gonna do this yeah so yeah. this falls in after this is after they've kind of done a, a run of movies together too so i bet this would be pretty fun to film kind yeah. of yeah it's short Nothing much happens. So that's basically the end. Like she leaves, she's been possessed. But to make it a little more confusing, there's a few extra lines there. So first of all, Barbara Crampton kind of digs in the old lady again, uh, just on their appearances. She's like, you weren't as pretty as I was, she says as she leaves. You were never as beautiful as I am. And then the old woman says something about how like the the worm will gouge lines on your face and spots on your skin. The worm will gouge lines in your face and leave spots on your skin. You'll turn into something you never imagined you'd become. I already have. It made me think of From Beyond immediately yeah. with like the mm, the like yeah. floating eel worm things in the air. Yeah. But I don't know. It felt it was like a Lynchian line too. We were like, oh yeah, the worm is coming. <laughs> Worms do that. <laughs> <laughs> and then it fades out. You think it's the end. You hear a snap. And you, the, the last shot is the, the rat man monster is like, I, I didn't even catch this, but I guess he's caught in a rat trap. He's dead, right? And you see him die. Yeah. Well, because there was a weird scene in the beginning Very where she's beginning. showing her around where she like places a rat trap, a large rat trap kind of towards the camera. So there's a lot of focus on it. So there's a scene where the rat is chasing Barbara Crimpton around on the ground. And I thought it was going to get caught or she was going to kind of throw it at it. But that didn't happen. But then it, I, the what is the size of that rat trap and the rat? It was kind of unclear because it, it seemed like yeah. it was the size of a cat. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I guess they had a hard time maybe having a man in full fluff suit, yeah. like, diminishing him down. So it, like, traps the rat, seemingly kills the rat, played by David Gale, and the movie ends, and then the next thing you see is, rest in peace, David Gale, you were <laughs> yeah. a great man. <laughs> Which I, I don't know if I've ever seen an actor's character die as the last scene of a movie, and then hit it up with an in memoriam right after. 
Yeah, especially when the actors dress like a goddamn rat monster. <laughs> Is yeah. in memory of David Least dignified role ever, and he nails it. But oh yeah, oh it's not how I would want to be remembered, <laughs> man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the type of movie we're dedicating this to anybody would be kind of strange <laughs> because it's just <laughs> yeah. Okay, <laughs> you're like no, thank you. <laughs> I'll pass again. It's like ten minutes of exposition, twenty minutes of just wild, hard to follow sex and <laughs> satanic <laughs> imagery. Suicide. Yeah, and suicide. <laughs> in memory of david gale oh man i mean we were talking about how castle freaks uh how combs was in castle freak was a little jarring just because he was sort of uh n- like not a great character like not a nice character and this is like that plus a hundred <laughs> yeah. he's, he's much worse I will say with no exaggeration that I thought Jeffrey Combs is really good in this, actually. I thought he was really good. Yeah, me too. It's, I mean, he handled it really well. Yeah, of course. I, I thought he was really, really good. Because, I mean, I love Dr. Mordred, but he's not very convincing as, you know, like as time-bending sorcerer in that film. And even in- Untrue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but here, like, I thought he actually just, like, really portrayed the part really well. The only oh, he's thing like it, yeah. he's menacing in a way that is actually it's it really works like that's Castle Freak. He's just kind of dirt baggy and and kind of makes bad decisions and a little pervy. But like this, he actually does kind of walk that line of like evil, but that kind of like schmarmy evil. I it, he really like it's fun seeing him like this. It's not. I feel like Doctor Mordred is like kind of so wholesome, <laughs> especially yeah. compared to like Castle Freak and then this. Yeah, I mean he's got some good like evil things like he makes people like commit suicide perform oral sex on his dead body like (laughs) kisses a rat with a human face you know like those are like evil things yeah yeah it's a better type of evil than what he was in castle freak for sure it's more fun yeah yeah i think when we're about 10 minutes into this i said this is gonna be a short comb crew episode (laughs) But then when we got to the end, I said, this is going to be a long comb script episode because just so much is packed into the last 15 minutes. It's it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So it says, um, sorry, like the last thing you see the, the rat die then says, in memory of David Gale. And then the, it fades out. Then it fades back in. It says, oh, Trancher's 1.5 will be in theaters uh, August 2014. <laughs> just, yeah. There's no closing credits, just instantly plugging. I guess that's the second thing from this anthology, maybe Pulse Ponders. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. yeah. Where were you guys when you remember seeing Trancers 1.5 <laughs> for the first time? <laughs> uh, like, where, where will you be? <laughs> where, where will you be? Yeah. yeah. So I I really thought from the cover, I thought that this was going to be an actual love story between a clergyman who falls in love with Barbara Crampton and has to save her from some evil, like other evil clergymen. And that is not what, what happened. Yeah. He just goes about it in the really wrong way. He's like, I have to save you by inhabiting your body. <laughs> You're dead now. Yeah. I was I, expecting some sort of church or some sort of religious themes, but there's really none of that again. He is a clergyman, but otherwise he's just like basically a sorcerer character. Yeah, I felt the same way. I, I was expecting him to be the evil clergyman just because like, you know, he's wearing the outfit. Um, but like Dan said, I, I also expected just some more like church stuff to happen. Yeah, there's really no, there's no religion in this whatsoever. Besides yeah. the fact that, you know, he's satanic ish there's a crucifix there's like one giant silver yeah. crucifix it looks like it's from the fog or something yeah the rat may be the devil because it's just it's taking souls i don't know who knows yeah. it's very abstract yeah yeah odd choice for the devil but hey you know what <laughs> everybody everybody's got their thing well, this, right? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this also reminds me of castle free because it just has like the dumbest nails name that just tells you exactly what it's about. Like Castle Freak yeah. is just called Castle Freak, and this is just called The Evil Clergyman. But, you um, know what you're getting. Yeah. yeah. But you don't. In you both get- films, you don't. <laughs> That's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> both of them pull the rug out from under you and give you something that's not quite what you expect. In Castle Freak, yeah. it's like two hours of painful, sad tragedy. And this is like ghost blowjobs and a rat monster with a face. <laughs> <laughs> but it's only a half hour. Yeah. <laughs> So they they make up for it in brevity. Well, that's like the ancient castle part of it just felt weird. Like it could have been in a church. She was there to see his body or something. And then, and then he's like, actually she thinks he's alive or it was just funny that it's set up in this ancient castle with a weird landlady. Like that part. And what I would have read of the story 
it's not this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Well, f- from what we know about Charles Band, he likes to film wherever he he has access to. Like because Castle Freak. Yeah, Castle, Castle. Yeah, Castle Freak. He had that castle, so they just filmed there. This feels like they just had a castle set and were like, this is where it happens. It's going to happen. Yeah. Or, or just had tons of styrofoam. <laughs> yeah. And we're like, well, <laughs> is this some spray paint and some styrofoam? Let's make ourselves a castle. <laughs> I, I think that assembling the styrofoam into the set would be too much work for them. So <laughs> I think I think they had a fully formed castle set somewhere that someone else is using and they borrowed it for a day. Yeah, well, that makes sense. It is one of the numerous Combs rolls. Like we, we have kind of running joke that most Combs rolls are either in a basement or an attic. Yeah. And this is another one that takes place entirely in an attic. Mm-hmm. Essentially, there's it's rafters. A, a turret. It's up but the it's stairs. The same thing, I yeah. feel like. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. We need, yeah, we need some grading skill for Combs films at like how much basement time and how much attic time there is. And, <laughs> yeah. The more we watch, I think we'll come across these things that happen more and more. Yeah, yeah. Whether or not he breaks out of prison. Oh, yeah. yeah. So we haven't talked about this in the podcast, but before we watch some of these films, we've been, uh, what, what do we call it? We've been kind of like taking bets on things that we think might happen in the film. Predictions. Oh, yeah. yeah. Predictions. That's what it's called. Predictions. <laughs> when you predict something. <laughs> yeah. I predicted that they would break out of prison just because every Jeffrey Combs film we've watched so far involves someone breaking out of jail. But that didn't even come close to happening. What did you do? No. Although, I mean, in a way, it it was unclear if he was stuck there in that room. And then he got to get yeah. into Crampton's body and walk on out of there as a hottie. I mean. <laughs> You're right. I guess he, he broke it. He broke out of the prison of the afterlife, perhaps. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So that, that could have happened. <laughs> Maybe. I don't think that counts, though. What was, no. your, what was your prediction? I, I predicted that uh, someone would get holy water thrown on them. Uh, yeah, not a no drop holy of holy water. Not a Missed drop. opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Crampton picks up that cross. I got excited that somebody was going to get impaled with it because that was mine. But no, mm-hmm. I don't even know what happened to it. Yeah, and I, I predicted there'd be some taxidermy and... We didn't get that. The rat almost counts. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That did look like taxidermy. <laughs> yeah. And I guess Crampton, she was like kind of hollowed out of her soul and then re-inhabited. So it's kind of taxidermy. Yeah. <laughs> taxidermy I don't know what the program. legal definition of taxidermy is, but. <laughs> Spiritual taxidermy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So this is strange because it's only been 39 minutes, which is like three hours shorter than all of our previous podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, I got, I got more. I got more. Um, oh no, I was joking. I mean, we should probably <laughs> <laughs> we, sh- we should try to keep these shorter. But if there's something, yeah. well, one one last thing. Yeah. Uh, he it, there's a lot of reanimator sort of vibes happening here, where he's just constantly saying like, "I died, and I'm gonna die again," and mm-hmm. he's literally speaking to Barbara Crampton while saying that he died. It's like, oh, I, I was dead, but not anymore. It's, he reanimated himself somehow, or he's a ghost, or what's, yeah. what is he? I don't know. It, that feels like a, yeah. It's a common theme with Combsian movies. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Life Ghost after reanimation. death. Yeah, life after death. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And I just, I want this movie, I also want this movie as a musical. Like, this would be really <laughs> so fun. Because yeah. it, it really did. When Barbara is just staring at the w- out the window and, like, the breeze is blowing her scarf, it just, you're, like, ready for her to take that deep inhale and yeah. just start singing about her dead clergyman boyfriend. Who's like evil. a foul mouth rat solo. Ooh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> would be very welcome. Oh, my gosh. Where's the feature? fan edit of, yeah. like, the music video for this? I want to yeah. see it. Yeah. If, it was a, if it was a musical, the first song is, you certainly have an unhealthy obsession with sex and death. <laughs> sex and death. Yeah, that whole part could have been just her calling Barbara like less attractive and a slut in, in song form. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. yeah. Let's do it. Okay. Th- Let's write that. <laughs> <laughs> the world is crying out for a musical reimagining of the evil clergyman. And that's in 88. Yeah. yeah, right, right, your Congress people <laughs> demand this movie be made once again. We gotta head straight to change.gov. Although, <laughs> although I guess that's all not of what... our fans, you guys, you hear you've heard the call. Although, maybe that's not the right thing for change.gov because it's not really a change. Maybe, maybe it's time to launch the Patreon or a GoFundMe. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> Um, I know. No, well, now, now I kind of want to watch Cellar Dweller, although Combs is not in it that much, but. It's just a, a great, it really is true. It's like, he dwells in do you life. have stairs that lead somewhere? Well, mm-hmm. Combs is going to be in that room acting his <laughs> ass off. At the end of it. 
Yeah. That's a very Combs role too, because he's an illustrator, but he's wearing a lab coat and he's going into a, <laughs> he's going into a basement. What illustrator wears a lab coat and works in a basement? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, well, yeah, I guess there's plenty that work in basements, but you know, it's not exactly the most common place. That could be a Combs thing where <laughs> he's always wearing the costume of a profession, be it a lab coat or in this case, a clergyman cost, a clergyman suit. Or in Dr. Mordred, a time sorcerer, <laughs> blue suit. Yeah. yeah. And, and robes. A bathrobe, yeah. Damers is just <laughs> FBI agent. Yeah. Hitler yeah. slash FBI agent. <laughs> <laughs> Hitler FBI yeah. agent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Yep. So, so guys, yeah. we just watched The Evil Clergyman. Clergyman. What was your favorite part of it? Jeffrey, Jeffrey Combs. <laughs> Did you try to do it slower? The <laughs> it's too good. We uh, promised. We, we made a pledge last time that it'd be worse each time. <laughs> we'll work on that for <laughs> next yeah, time. We'll get off again. It'll, it'll happen. Yeah.